Hello, good day, and welcome to this very first video on programming language compared. Now, I said in the teaser video that this is for fun, um, and I'll try and be objective as I can professionally be. And most of these languages um, are languages I've had to deal with in some way. Um, either I've tried to learn them, spend some time with it, talk to people who use them a lot, something like that, right? So. Um, none of these languages are languages I've never tried in any way. Even if I'm not proficient in them, I've tr at least tried them. There are other languages that I've tried or used even more extensive than some of the languages on the list that I'm not including. And um, I don't know exactly why I'm not including it. For example, I've used D quite a bit years, years ago when it first came out, but I'm not putting it on the list. Um, I've played with Ruby a long time ago again when it first came out maybe 10, 15 years ago. I don't even know how long ago it was that I played with it. So just a, again, another example of there are some other languages that I'm not going to include. But the ones that I have here, I have either programming extensively in a half of them, uh, more than half of them, and like two of them I've played with enough or a little bit. All right, with that said and out of the way, I'm gonna try, like I said, and be objective, but I'm gonna tell you when I'm being biased or when I like a language and I couldn't, I can't find any reason other than it just feels right or I just like it, right? So I'll be upfront about that sort of stuff. Again, um, this is sort of for fun. See, if you have your favorite language on this list and it's not my favorite language, or I come to a conclusion that you don't like or agree with, just, you know, post a comment. You just be nice about it. I say you, you respectfully disagree or you disagree, or show me another point of view with some code examples or a comment or point or some link or something. I just don't think we have to get into a fight over languages, okay? Like I said in the teaser video, this is not going to be like the whole um, Java, C++ war, or Vim versus the VI versus Emac war, okay? If you've been around for that and you're all like me, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you're too young, you don't know what this is about, you can Google it, okay? All right, with that said, um, we have a number of things to install. And so we're going to need to install compilers and interpreters. Um, and we're going to need to install an editor. I'm using Visual Studio Code, so I'm going to show you that. If you have your specific editor that you like using, whether it's Eclipse or whatever, NetBeans, you know, JetBrain, whatever, I use pretty much all those editors I just mentioned at one time or the other, depending on the project, I would still probably pull them up, okay? So um, there's no, don't be too, what must I say, uh, you know, pedantic about anything so or dogmatic so um so um just use whatever works for you and you're comfortable with um the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install version control and that's because i'm push the code and the examples in um git like i do for all my series and so you're free to pull it from there examine the code try it out for yourself and if you would like contribute for those who are skilled with git or whatever you know it so you can submit pull requests. I would certainly con consider it and integrate it and stuff, especially if it's examples that are better than mine, okay? I would really like that. All right, so what are one of the first things we're gonna do is, like I said, install compilers and interpreters. And these are the ones that we're gonna install and this is where you can find information about them. Don't worry about it. We're gonna look at how to install it in the next video for, for Macintosh. The video after that is going to be about Linux, and then the video after that is going to be Windows. Um, but anyway, stop at the top of the list. Golang is fairly easy to install. You go to the website, and you download it, and I'll try and show you that for all the different operating systems. Scala, same thing. Python, Groovy. Java is a little bit weird um, because it's OpenJDK, and then there's the Oracle JDK. So we're probably going to just stick with the Oracle JDK and use that. But those are the things that we need in terms of compilers and interpreters. Other tools, like I said, we're gonna use Git for version control. If you don't plan to um, download the code, my code, or anything like that, and you just wanna write all the code that you see, um, you might decide not to use Git. Up to you, I just think it might make your life easier, even if you decide to use my code or not, all right? Um, having Git allow you to clone the code, pull it in, pull updates, and um, just have a nice way of keeping in sync. Visual Studio Editor, again, Visual Studio Code or VS Code. I really like it. It's a nice, small, light editor. Um, there are a number of plugins that I'm going to use for Visual Studio Code. If you're using Visual Studio Code like me, you're going to see 
the plugins I'm going to use. I'm going to show you the list of those. Now, these are the Visual Studio plugins that I'm using and in parentheses are the authors. Just so if you search for them, you might see several and um, you don't have to guess which one I'm using. So the auto open markdown preview, I have that only because if in the Git um, repository, you're going to find a readme.md markdown file. And if you wanted to modify it um, to, you know, help me out or something with the documentation, um, this auto open preview markdown help you to see the markdown you're writing and on the other side, what it's going to look like. So that is really not required for the course in any way. The one that are sort of um, would be good to have for this course if you wanted to follow along with the asterisks being on like two of them that you really don't need because they have nothing to do with programming. Um, the other one, of course, it makes sense, C++, um, um, the plugin from Microsoft for editing C++ C++ code, and it doesn't have to be micro C++, C++ it really doesn't matter if you're using um, your Windows or not, the plugin is still going to be fine. Um, snippets, again, um, that's not really needed because we're not going to write that much C++ C++ code, but if you're going to go and install the C++ C++ um, plugin and looking at the C code, might as well get some plugins. Um, snippets to go along. Code Runner. This one is really, really good plugin because um, we're going to be able to stay inside of VS Code and run in num all of our examples. Uh, we don't have to come out and do compile and all this other stuff because um, every, you know, for C, C++, Go, especially those compile languages, um, there's a certain way you have to compile and we're not, we don't have to worry about it. We can even be able to use it for Python, Groovy, and Scala. So we're going to be able to stay inside of an editor and just run some code really quickly. And that allows us to spend time talking about the code and not have to worry about how to compile it. Um, diff tool. Um, this is going to come in Andy when we want to show differences between languages and files. So um, it would be nice to have um, the Go plugin, um, language support for Java um, from Red Hat, um, Python plugin, um, there's a Scala and Again, there's another one, just like the auto open, the snippets and the diff tool, not totally required, but nice to have. I definitely think the diff tool of all the optional tool, the diff tool is the one that you really should also include. Um, the to do parser, um, basically when you put a little markers like to do text in code, just come back to, um, it allows you to find them nice and easy to tell you which file has to do um, hanging around that you might want to get back to. Again, not required. We're not going to spend that much time Coding, coding big big examples, but I thought since I have it installed and it was a nice tip to tell you about it, um, maybe you can install on this go wrong if you don't have it already. The repository, where the code is gonna be hosted. So I've already created this repo. This is a suggestion how you might get started is to create a directory, LCP, Learn Computer Programming, that's sort of my, my overall team. Um, the umbrella for my three YouTube courses so far, uh, web programming, fundamentals, Go language programming, and now programming language compared. And then in that directory, you can clone the project and then just open it with the editor of your choice. All right, so that's pretty much it. That's what we're gonna be installing and what we're gonna need to get going. In the very next video, I'll walk through the setup and installation for Mac, followed by Linux, then followed by Windows. The reason I'm not trying to do all that in one video is because I want to keep the video nice and short. Anyway, see you in the next video, which is going to be posted soon. Take care. Have a great day. Follow me on Twitter um, at Straversity1 or Instagram Straversity. That's it. Bye. Thanks.